Hi everyone, I just want to do a book review today of Yasmin Mohammed's book called Unveiled, How Western Liberals Empower Radical Islam. So I picked up the e-version of this book on Amazon and it wasn't very expensive. So if you are interested in this book, just know that you can pick it up fairly cheaply. Um, as I started reading the book, I thought that the title was a little bit off. I was expecting it to be an analysis of how Western liberals empower radical Islam, but it actually turned out to be her memoir. Now, don't get me wrong, the memoir is fascinating. I read 75% of the book in the first sitting because that's how interesting I thought that her life was. Um, but I do wanna share a few of the points that she makes in the book with you today. So she starts out in the prologue talking about why she became an activist, and it was the fateful interview between Sam Harris, Bill Maher, and Ben Affleck in October of 2015. And in this interview, Ben Affleck, who's an actor that had made a movie mocking Christianity, was fervently defending Islam. And that was the day that Yasmin Mohammed realized that she needed to start speaking out against people like Ben Affleck. So that's what she did. Um, her mother was part of a polygamous marriage in Canada, and the husband of the mother was sexually and physically abusing Yasmin. And it wasn't until she got to public school that one of her teachers noticed that this was going on and reported it to the authorities. But when in, when in front of the judge, um, the judge basically said, well, you guys are Muslims, and that's what you do. So, um as she had been hoping to be put in foster care, she ended up having to stay in the home. And here's what she says about it. She says, um, in their effort to be culturally sensitive, my own country ended up being viciously bigoted towards me. And she calls this the heinous racism of low expectations. Um, she says that the sexual exploitation of children is sanctioned in Islam. And this is because the prophet Mohammed married a six-year-old and he's considered to be the perfect man. So child marriage is okay. And this has been confirmed to, confirmed to me by a couple of Muslims ladies that I spoke to on, at a street fair. Um, basically they said to me, you know, if a girl is ready for marriage at age nine, you know, so be it. Um, so Yasmin Mohammed says, it's important to remember that these ideas travel across borders. It is essential for Western countries to protect their young girl citizens from barbaric and archaic families and communities uh, that engage in such atrocities. So this made me think of something, uh, the 2015 election in Canada, the Conservative Party wanted to set up something called a barbaric um, practices hotline. And this was to support people who, like Yasmin Mohammed, are stuck in these kind of weird religious situations. Um, but I remember at the time, the left just found it hilarious and they berated the conservatives for doing that. And thinking back, it's like, no matter what your political stripes are, isn't it better to have more services for people instead of less? So um, I guess that's a question for people who were against it at the time. Um, so Yasmin had to start wearing the hijab at age nine, and this was so that she wouldn't go to hell. And also in case the caliphate came, she would not be killed. So apparently when the caliphate comes, you better be dressed for it. Um, she says that the hijab is the physical representation of the subjugation and dehumanization and absolute gender apartheid that is commonplace in many parts of the Muslim world. Um, so in response to no, uh, to World Hijab Day, she has started something called No Hijab Day. It's hashtag No Hijab Day. And she also says that women are also using hashtag free from hijab. Um, so it isn't until the last chapter of the book that she talks about Western liberals and especially Western feminists. She works every day with women who are trying to gain equality in the Muslim world. But she says that Western feminists will just not stand with her because they are afraid of being called racist. Um, so, um, 
And, and she says, even worse than just ignoring them, Western corporations actively support the very things that these women fight against. So examples that she give, gives are the 2019 swimsuit issue features a burkini and the poster for the Women's March depicts a woman in a hijab. And she gives other examples of this in the book. She says, how can we fight Western patriarchy while simultaneously supporting Islamic patriarchy? Um, and that's a good question. Western feminists, she basically thinks that Western feminists are so bored that they have to invent problems to fight against, such as man spreading. But she says they're really missing an opportunity to help women who really do need equal rights. And this reminded me a friend of a friend of mine who's convinced that the U.S. is going to become like the Handmaid's Tale and wants to set up a foundation to send IUDs to women in the United States. And I remember at the time saying to her something like, well, why don't you help women in Iran? And yeah, it's just, I guess it's just seems really difficult to be able to do that. But uh, Yasmin Mohammed has teamed up with a team of other activists and they have started a website called Free Hearts, Free Minds for ex-Muslims who are currently living in Muslim-majority countries and need counseling services. So they are accepting donations for that, and I will put a link to that website in the description. Um, so she says that Eastern cultures want to progress, but it's people like Ben, ben Affleck who are shielding Muslims from progress. So. We need to take her advice. If, we're, if you're in the West, start speaking out about these things. She says that in the West, we have self-imposed blasphemy laws, and that's true. I know some atheists who won't speak out about this stuff because they're, the most important thing is just to be woke. Um, so I recommend the book. She had to self-publish the book because of the content. Nobody wanted to publish it. Um, so buy the book, support our atheist authors, and I think that's all I want to say about the book. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Bye. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.